what we're going to look at now is some of the options that we've actually got in each one of these viewports and how we can change the way that we view our scene in each one of them independently. I'm going to be starting with the perspective view as that's the main view that we sort of work with and what I can do with this is I can view what's in here in several different ways. At the moment what I've got is what's called the smooth and highlights and if I just move this uh, view out of the way here slightly you can see it a little bit better. You can see there we've got smooth and highlights and as I move my mouse over that you can see that it turns yellow to show that it's being highlighted. If I click on that I'm given several different options here, um, some of them slightly more advanced than others but basically what I've got here is I can use a hidden line view which shows sort of the viewport, it's like a wireframe view but it's hiding the information that's behind or, or you know that I can't see that's sort of in, in the opposite direction to where I'm looking. So that's that one. I've got a wireframe view which then sort of shows me elements in, in between and behind my object that I've got selected. So you can see here this is my object, this is my teapot and I can now see the ground plane behind it. If I went back to hidden line you would see that, that it's almost like looking at a smooth view but not quite. I've also got flat uh, which is very good for checking outlines of objects if you're ever unsure about what you're looking at. Uh, it is obviously completely flat so not everyone's a cup of tea. And I can go back to uh, smooth and highlights there where I can see a little bit of shadow or, or in this case because I've got a light this isn't necessarily shadow this is just an area that's not lit. I've also got uh, other visual styles if I click on there so I could view just a smooth which would be without any textures on or I could uh, view facets which if we look at this you can see each one of the faces of this object are being shown and I've also got things like uh, bounding box if I've got a very very heavy scene I can just see the view extents of that object so going back to smooth and highlights there so I've got lots of different ways there of looking at those visual styles that I want to do I can also change the cha the transparency of my objects. Now this won't really affect what we're looking at at the moment because we don't have anything in there that's transparent. But if I did have something that was transparent, uh, it would show up as being sort of, um, in this instance, if I click on that, transparency, I would have the best results possible. I've also got options here to view a viewport background. And we're going to get into this a little bit later on um, when we start doing modeling. And I've also got things like my X view as well. Now this is very good for doing a, a visual style and a visual check. So I can see if I've got T vertices or overlapping vertices or isolated vertices. And if I click on that, you'll see it down at the bottom it says isolated vertices, none selected. So I'll select my object and it says isolated vertices, zero vertices. So that means that there's no isolated vertices in that mesh, which is obviously a good thing. I can also, actually if I want to turn that off, I go to X view and then I just uncheck it and that information disappears at the bottom here. I've got my perspective view and again I can pick whichever one of my views that I want to work from here. I can also within this viewport have something like my scene explorer or I can have my asset browser as well. Things again that we'll talk a little bit more in detail about later on. If I want to change my viewport, there are viewport shortcuts like I could press um, L for example to have my left view or if I press the V key I've got this little quad menu that comes up that allows me to pick which view I want to work with and there you can see I've got my viewport back as being perspective. If I want to configure my viewport I press the little plus button and I've got the option down here to configure and when that comes up I've got lots of different options in here and I can turn on force two-sided, I can turn on the Z-buffered wireframe objects if I want to. I can pick what my rendering level is, so at the moment I've got it at smooth and highlights. I can pick my layout, so for example if I was doing something where I was maybe animating and I wanted to have just three reference views and one main animation view, I can do that. Or if I'm animating and I want to have one viewport down in the bottom here where I might want to put, uh, I don't know, maybe my track view or something like that, I could work like this. There's lots of different options we can have here. My save frames are important to set my action and title safe if I'm working for television, just to make sure that I don't go outside of uh, any known boundaries. 
Also, if you're doing presentation work, this is a useful one to do because you'll never, you can never be quite sure what the projector will give you and how much will be lost into sort of the, the edge of your presentation. So that's always good. Your view cube, I tend to turn that off uh, just because I find it takes up screen space and isn't really needed. Same with the steering wheel. Make sure that the steering wheel isn't turned on, otherwise it's going to take up an awful lot of space with what you're working on. And really that's just about it. There is an option here with lighting and shadows, which we're going to get into a little bit uh, later on. But if I just click OK, that's going to set me up. Oh, one other thing actually, while I remember it, let's go back to this configure. Let's go to our statistics. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on polygon count and triangle count. I'm going to turn off vertex count and I'm going to turn on total plus selection. So that's not really, really going to mean very much until I press the 7, numeric 7 key on the top, just above your, your keyboard. Your keyboard that has got the AND key with it. And you'll notice here that we've got 3,904 polygons in the scene, 7,688 uh, triangles. If I start to rotate around the scene, you can see there my graphics card is redrawing this scene at a whopping 150 frames per second, which is fantastic. And the object that I've got selected, which is this ground plane here, if I just press F4 to see my wireframe overlay, um, that's got 32 polygons in it. If I select the teapot, that's got about 3,800. So that's really taking up most of the number of polygons in this scene. And I can see that very quickly and very easily by having that option on. Now obviously because of the screen resolution here this is taking up a lot of space so maybe I don't want it on the screen all the time. If that's the case I'll just press the 7 key and I'll close it down. 